And essentially, the breast implant is a silicon implant made of a silicon shell, and the inside is filled with uh, silicon. Yeah. There are, of course, other variations filled with saline. And the objective of putting such implants in your body is to enhance and increase the volume of your breast. The thing about textured implants is that there's still some risk relation to ARCL. So I would definitely choose a round implant where possible, but then that will also mean that for this group of patients, then you cannot have, let's say, teardrop shaped implants. But we need to counsel the patient accordingly, and if they insist, then of course we need to let them know of the risk. There is a uh, newer implant, a sixth generation implant known as the uh, Motiva implant. So this implant is nano textured, so it's very close to a smooth implant. So it has got that smoothness in its shell um, without the disadvantages of being a smooth implant. And because of the characteristic of the gel, it does behave somewhat like a teardrop shaped implant. So that's also another option. The disadvantage is that this implant is fairly new. Okay, It's, I think, been in the market for about, I think, just about 10 years or slightly less. And because of this, it's not FDA approved. Yeah, but it's HSA approved in Singapore. So I do have some patients with concerns because it's not uh, FDA approved yet. It has also been in use for a shorter period of time. There could be problems that we have not picked up yet. You know, so there is a, a uh, possibility that, you know, we may find out more in the future. How it starts is that you have symptoms of sudden swelling. You know, it can happen any time, but typically about one year after the implants are put in. What actually happens is that the implant surface actually rubs with the skin and it's believed that in that interaction, something happens and it triggers a process, an inflammatory process. And this process in itself can cause some mutation and that in terms cause the ALCL formation. However, do not be alarmed because the incidence is actually very low, as low as 1 in 30,000. The treatment is essentially to remove the implant, the entire capsule together. And then that is usually curative. But of course, it depends on how soon you detect the problem. You need to have regular follow-ups to ensure that the implanted devices are still working well. And then if you have any symptoms of sudden swelling or change in shape, you know, or loss of volume, then you should, of course, uh, check in with your plastic surgeon to make sure that everything is okay. The truth is that breast implants are not meant for life. They're all man-made devices. So as with any man-made device, there's a shelf life. So they are all meant to be replaced at some point in time. If you use your own fat, the advantage is that the tissue is your own. So once it has healed, you will have a permanent increase in your breast volume because it's your own tissue. But having said that, not everyone is suitable for fat grafting. You must have sufficient donor sites. Different manufacturers will have them uh, suggested numbers, but it will be somewhere between 15 and 20 years. Uh, or of course, uh, if you have got complications earlier, such as like a rupture or capsular contracture, then uh, you may need to have it removed earlier, but usually about there. Capsular contracture is a very specific condition whereby when you have an implant, because the implant is a foreign body, inside your body, your body will create a capsule around it. Right. Every foreign body will have a capsule around it. And this capsule, over time, okay, can have problems. One of the problems we have is that the capsule will start to shrink, right? Okay, And then because of that, the implant will start to feel a bit harder. It may become misshapen. Um, and then the patients may start to feel pain. Yeah. So they can feel uh, the implant hardening. It can change shape. Um, it can shift a bit. And of course, uh, it can be painful. There is no limitation, right? Because when it comes to breast implants, it really depends on on what you buy off the shelf, right? In practice, of course, there are certain sizes that are more ideal uh, that suit your frame, your height, your breast, whether you have sufficient tissue, right, to contain this volume. So, in short, you could much pick any volume that you want, um, but it is important that it is an appropriate volume for you. And the truth is that the larger the implants, is there could be more potential problems and complications. It is safe to breastfeed um, after you have had breast implants um, because all that silicon and all that gel is actually kept within the shell. So there's no worry 
that this liquid will leak into the breast milk. So the the cost of the surgery um, would involve several factors. The first is the surgeon's fees, then of course the anesthesia fees, and then the facility choice that you pick. Then of course the final factor is the choice of implants, right? What, what brand of implants you pick and then different implants would have different prices. So the total cost could be somewhere in the ten to $15,000 range. The advice is to be very well informed. Yeah, it's to find out as much as you can um, so that you have an idea and there's so much information available. It's all readily available for you to read up, basically to know what your options are, right? Besides breast implants, there's also fat grafting so that at least you can make that decision with all these considerations and not hastily so that you will not regret your decisions later.